Hey, what's going on, Game Weepers? This is Ix, and in today's upload, we're going to be talking about the 2020 tier list. So the alleged changes for 1220, they'll probably go through most of them, so we're going to break down what these changes might mean for the Rift. Champions who are getting buffed or nerfed who will be a lot better or a lot worse based on these buffs and nerfs that will be hitting the Rift very soon. But just before we do get into the video, one thing you guys have to do before you get into your next game is to download the Paul Professor app linked in the description because it allows you to quickly import the best room page used from the best players in the world on the channel champion you're picking, you don't have to make the room page, just one click of a button and bang, you're ready to go. But that's not all, because the app also allows you to scout your opponent and the app will give you their stats, how well they play their champion, so you can know more about your opponent than they know about themselves. And the app also gives you an in-game overlay, so you can compare your CS and your kill participation to your rank or even challenger players like Faker. And there's a reason why 3 million people have downloaded this free application, guys. It's because it works. So get around it in Season 12. Those links it in the description. Now, as far as the top lane tier list goes, we see Aatrox, Darius, Garen, and Nasus in the broken tier. And you might be like, but Aatrox is getting nerfed in 1220. Yes, that's correct, but it isn't going to be the biggest nerf in the world. So the fact your passive healing is going down 20%, yes, it does affect your sustain during the laning phase, but there are still so many strengths for Aatrox. The champion is broken because of the Q sweet spot damage. The fact you can go Gore Drinker now, even though Eclipse got nerfed. And remember, Gore Drinker, the mythic ability haste got buffed not so long ago to seven, so you still have decent scaling even with this item. And your low cooldowns is especially when Gore Drinker's Mythic Passive starts activating. It's too much to deal with still, so Aatrox remains in Broken. Now for Darius, well, he's not getting nerfed in 1220, and nothing is really getting nerfed for him, so just like Aatrox, he is remaining in Broken. And Garen is also remaining in the Broken tier, and for Garen, it's kind of nice because Mortal Reminder is getting buffed, so the actual number of auto attacks you need to activate the Grievous Wind's Passive is going down by one. This is obviously really nice because after your Stride Breaker and Berserker Screes, you do get all Mortal Reminder. Also, if you want to go PD into Infinity Edge to really make use of the Crit buff from last patch, you can certainly still do that. And Susan is also here because of the buffs from last patch to your ultimate, so the Q range, and also to the tick damage. This happening twice as much. This has been huge. And also to your W's attack speed reduction based on the movement speed reduction in your wither. This means that attack speed based top lane is in the top lane, really struggle against Nasus. I guess the only setback for Nasus in 1220 is that Frozen Heart is getting nerfed. So it's going up 200 gold. The rock solid passive is getting nerfed as well. And even though you're getting a little bit more armor, it does slow down your scaling just a little bit. But still, Nasus will be an unreal champion. Now, as far as other top lane is getting changed, we have Wukong making his way into S tier because his ultimate is getting more damage. Now, I don't know why, because Wukong's all in is as good as anyone's, so to have more damage there, it pretty much means you're never going to lose that all in. And because Wukong does so well against so many top laners, because of the mobility you have, the engage you have, you can pounce on their mistakes, he has to move up into S tier. Now, Gwen is another top laner getting buffed, so your Q's damage, the base snip damage is going up at later ranks, and also the last snip damage you deal, this is going up as well. So for Gwen, this has seen her move up into B tier from C tier. She still won't be like the most OP champion, but she is certainly more pickable. That's why she's moved up. And Jace is another top laner getting buffed. So as far as your resistances go, when you switch forms, these are getting buffed. And also your W's mana cost refund in your melee form. So when you auto attack with your hammer out, this is going to give back more mana. So this will just make your laning phase a lot stronger because mana is so important for Jace to bully the enemy champion. So that's why he's in low key broken. Now alongside Jace, we do have a champion who's getting nerfed in 1220. This is Set. So for Set, because your base magic resist is going down against AP top laners, you're worse off. Also, your passive regen is getting nerfed too. So this means in the early game, you're not going to regenerate as much HP, so your lane sustain is nerfed. But what is happening, you're getting more attack damage in your right punch. This is scaling more, so 5% extra. This means in the mid to late game, once you start getting some attack damage, you will be better. Now, as far as other nerf champions in the top lane in 1220, we have Maokai. So your passive, the healing, this is getting nerfed. And also your ultimate at Lady Ranks, the cooldown is going up. So from 80 seconds at rank 3 to level 16 to 100 seconds. Now, to be honest, doesn't really matter too much on Maokai because you're probably only using one Twisted Advance in those 100 seconds, two minutes anyway. So it doesn't really matter like how high that cooldown is, and Maokai will still be a very strong champion, maybe a bit like Nasus, Frozen Heart getting nerfed is a bit of a hit, but the tree will still be very, very strong. And this might not be a champion change, but the item buff that's coming into Steris Gage, this is going to help a lot of top laners out. So what's happening to Steris Gage is that you're getting more bonus AD based off your base AD. So if you have really high base AD, so we're talking like maybe Nar when he's in his mega form, Darius, Alawi, a bunch of top laners are going to enjoy this, so you're going to get more bonus attack damage. Also, the shield amount is scaling more of your bonus HP, so 5% more, and the decay time in the shield, this is going up by almost one second. This is huge for any top laner who wants to build this. So maybe even Darius, right? If he goes Trinity Force into Steris Gage, this could be viable again. Something like Alawi, Nah, like I said, these champions are really going to froth this. Now, another item getting changed for all you AP bruisers out there is Demonic Embrace. So you're losing 100 HP, but you are gaining 15 AP. But this could even be good for a champion maybe like Akali in the top lane, because raw AP is important for 
you, the HP not so much. So for champions who actually do want to build ability power, this could be big. I still think for champions like Singe and Mordekaiser, so the item will still be good. You'll hit even harder, but you will be a little squishy. So I guess that's the drawback. So those are all the top lane changes for 1220, and that's the tier list based on them. Now heading to the mid lane here, from 1219, the broken champions aren't really changing. Fizz, Syndra, Vex, and Zed. You might be wondering why Syndra is here if her win rate, well, isn't really that great in the majority of ELOs, but the fact is when she's played by the best players, she is very hard to take down because of the new changes to Syndra. So your splinter stacking and your passive, and because of some of the ridiculous bonuses you get once you actually reach these thresholds. So we're talking like a 90 degree E angle, which you legit just cannot miss. It doesn't matter how good or bad you are. Your ultimate executing champions, if they have 15% of their max HP, that is still ridiculous. And even just your Q stacking, the fact you can stack two of these and have them ready for a team fight, you will blow people up when they get CC'd. Fizz, we know why he's here because of the 15% AP ratio buff on your E. Vex, we know why because of the Q buffs a few patches ago. So the cooldown going down to four seconds at level nine or rank five. Also the AP ratio going up and Zed because of the Scorch buffs, the sustain nurse to everyone else. You're starting with three health potions, the E energy buff as well. So these four champions remain at the top. But what about mid laners who are actually getting changed in 1220? Well, one mid laner we've kind of talked about already, this being set, because he really was benefiting from the mid lane and those changes to his face breaker. So the actual slow going up to 70% a couple of patches ago, this made him really deadly in the mid lane because lots of champions you play against will be a mobile. So as soon as you land that face breaker, especially if your jungler's there, GG. That's why his magic resist has been nerfed, his passive has been nerfed. So taking poke in the mid lane, because you will be versing ranged champions for the most part, he's just going to be worse off. That's why he's dropped all the way down the C tier. Now other mid lane is getting changed, but we have Ziggs. Now I know Ziggs has played more in the bot lane at the moment, but in the mid lane, you might consider playing him because his Q's damage is getting buffed. So the base damage is going up by 10 at each rank. You max this first, so you will be accessing this buff. So this is nice for Ziggs. That's why he's moved up into A tier. And I think he can really be played because of the sustain nerf that is still in the game. Champions just don't appreciate your poke as much, so you are more annoying, and he could even be a good flex pick in the pro scene. But apart from those champions, not much is really changing in the mid lane guy. I would just recommend staying away from playing Nunu in the mid lane despite the AP buff and your ultimate from last patch. And do be a little bit careful about picking some of these C tier champions. So I know Azir has picked an awful lot at Worlds at the moment in 1218. But in solo queue, the stats just don't lie. He has like a 45, 46% win rate. And that's really the same for the rest of these champions in C tier. So statistically, it's probably a wise move to stay away from them in solo queue if you do want to win. Now, as far as the jungle goes in 1220, kind of like the mid lane, not too much is changing. So in the broken tier, we have Belver, Fiddlesticks, and Udyr. And we also have Ramus. Now, I did talk yesterday about how stupid these changes to Ramus sound. So your W, right, which actually slowed you before, you're not going to slow yourself anymore. This is one of the biggest buffs that I've seen recently, and it's impossible for me not to put Ramus in broken just because of this. But that's not the only buff to Ramus. Like you think it would be, but it's not because your ultimate, the speed you get from this, is also increasing based off your own movement speed. So these are some huge changes to Ramus, and if you are playing the Armadillo, get ready for some free LP in 1220. Now Belver, Fiddlesticks, Uda, like I mentioned, these champions are not getting buffed or nerfed in any way. Maybe Udi, you might think about Demonic Embrace getting getting changed so you're losing a bit of HP if you are going the Sunfire Demonic Embrace setup this might affect you in some way but these champions are just innately strong that's why they have to be unbroken now what about some other junglers well Evelyn is getting buffed in 1220 so the Q marked bonus damage you deal so when you mark a target with your Q the bonus damage you deal to that champion is going up so the base damage is going up by five and also your W's charm duration is going up by a quarter of a second at later ranks now you will be maxing this last of course but still in the mid to late game when you do actually scale into a game and you start one-shotting pretty much everyone this means the enemy champion particularly if they have Merc Treads, they're going to be charmed for a little bit longer, allowing you to get in your full damage combo. So that's why Evelyn has moved up from B tier into underrated. Now, other junglers apart from Evelyn and Ramus who are getting changed, well, we have Elise who's getting a quality of life buff, I guess. So your Q's cast range, well, it's no longer going to rely on you hitting the center of the target's hitbox. You can hit them on the edge of it. Now, I don't really know if this is a buff or a nerf, so I guess Riot might be right by calling it an adjustment, but we'll have to wait and see just exactly what this means. Now, as far as Blitzcrank goes in the jungle, he is actually getting some changes, so in terms of his bonus monster damage. But honestly, guys, I just would not pick Blitz in the jungle. He's so broken at the moment as a support. So please go down to the bot lane and pick him there. And as far as the rest of the jungle champions go, again, not much is really changing. You can see that in S tier, we have your kind of typical champions who have been here for so long. Diana, Echo has moved up because of the buffs from last patch. We have Graves, Kindred, Maokai because he's so strong at the moment. Master Yi, despite getting nerfed, he's still really strong. So consider picking these champions to boost your chances of getting LP in 1220. Now heading down to the bot lane, guys, of course, we have two more roles to talk about. So let's get into the AD carries for 1220. Now in the broken tier, honestly, not much is really changing since last patch. So we have Draven, Kaiser, Samira, and then we have Tristana. These four champions statistically are performing better than any other champions. Even though Eclipse got nerfed for Draven, you still have the Essence Reaver Spike paired with Serrated Dirk. Remember, Serrated Dirk is giving you the same amount of lethality. So your early to mid game-ish, it's still very, very powerful. And because of
because there's pretty much like no champion who can contest you still, you get out of the laning phase ahead, especially if you can cash in those adoration stacks and you snowball out of control. Kaiser is here because of the buffs recently and Samira because she counters so many AD carries. Tristana is here as well because statistically speaking in every single elo, she's performing very, very well. So those are the most broken AD carries. Now we did mention Ziggs from earlier guys, so his Q's base damage going up. So that's why he's an underrated. In the bot lane, again, just think about it because there's less sustain there nowadays. This means that Ziggs, because you're poke, the enemy champions are going to hate you even more. And alongside Ziggs, we have Heimerdinger, kind of the same reason. And then we have Yasuo because his wind wall, well, it just cucks so many AD carries, right? And because there are a lot of AD carries who aren't a strong early game anymore, like lots of champions have been nerfed, Yasuo just outscales them and can get to a point where he can easily take over games. Now, Misfortune has dropped quite a lot because of the recent nerfs, and there are lots of other AD carries who you can actually pick into her and crush her with. So that's why she's dropped down to A tier. And speaking of A tier, well, one champion who was in A tier from last patch in 1219, this was Jinx. And Jinx has now moved up to S tier because of those buffs to her base HP and also to her ultimate damage. This has really given you a boost in the early game, so you can actually get to your hyper carry mid to late game more often than not. One change to consider though, guys, for the whole AD carry group is that Lethal Tempo is getting nerfed for ranged champions. So the actual attack range you get once you actually auto attack six times or get to the max stacks, it's going down by 25 to 50. So I think this is really going to affect champions who rely on the range. So champions like Caitlyn, Jinx might be one, maybe Ash, maybe even Kaiser you run Lethal Tempo in some matchups. So of course, lots of AD carries will be affected. Just be very careful of picking Zeri because the champion is pretty much dead at the moment. Now the final role to talk about, of course, these are the supports, but there is one champion in Broken, Blitzcrank, who is getting some changes. So your passive shield, which is based off your max mana, this is scaling now from 15% to 45% instead of just being a flat 30%. This is a nerf to your early game. So this is definitely a nerf to your laning phase and makes you less strong. Also your Q's damage at later ranks, so from level two onwards, is getting nerfed. So you're all in, your one-shot potential. Honestly, I still think it's gonna be there. Blitzcrank still does so much damage, especially with the buff to your ultimate, not so long ago, that base damage increased. So I still think it will be there. Those are pretty much the only changes you have to worry about for Blitzcrank as a support. He's still going to be insanely good. His win rate at the moment in Platinum and above is like 54, 55%. These might bring his win rate down, what, like 1% if we're lucky? So nothing to worry about here. As far as other supports go, well, we kind of mentioned Set. This is why he's dropped down to B tier from A tier. Maokai as well because of the passive nerf. Well, it doesn't really affect him as a support, so he's staying in A tier. And as far as the rest of the champions go here, guys, pretty standard. We have a Mumu and Broken, Janna, Zyra, statistically very strong and just innately right. A Mumu because of the mana buffs to your Q not so long ago. Janna well because of the new version of Janna is so broken the Q speed the tornado with Glacial it's so hard to kill Janna and her teammates Zyra because of the buffs to your ease lockout also with the scorch buff you might have to take into account the demonic embrace nerf but you are getting more AP now but the range tick damage you deal to enemy champions is getting nerfed so we'll have to see how much this affects Zyra but she will still be very very strong as far as the other supports go guys just don't pick MF as a support she's been nerfed way too much but that's about it thank you so much for watching the video if you did enjoy it please leave a like down below any questions thoughts leave them in the comment section and until our next season 12 upload this has been peace